Hello and welcome everyone to another session from World of Play. Will Harris, your host. And we are in Revit Management Training, Vim Manager Survival Skills. Yes, you did click on the right link if you're watching the recording <laughs> uh, phases. I'm going to jump over to the next slide. Okay, critical for IT, uh, for IT projects, TI projects. Um, it's critical to have good IT in your office so you can have good TI projects later anyway. Um, we're going to go through all the pieces of phasing including what is uh, best practices for naming conventions and color schemes and all that, which happen to be almost what the standard is for Revit. So uh, there's a lot of good stuff here. Let's just get right into it. And of course, if you have any questions, please just go ahead and stop me. Most of you know phasing. I just want to make sure that we're OK with it. Um, proper use of phasing, naming conventions, and then value added, how to make all this work. Um, if you've been using a lot of phasing, this may be a little bit of review for you. So I'm not going to go too much into the details of it uh, in terms of what phasing is. You can read the help file, and in fact, this is straight from the help file. The key words here is phase-specific filters. That's going to be one of the, the cool things there. Um, and this is, of course, view-specific. And so, shall we begin with phasing? Okay. There's no limit to the number of phases that you can have in a project. Now, what you would like to do, though, is start small and then grow. And what, ha what happens when we combine phases? All of these things, that's what we're going to talk about now in our wonderful uh, Revit project. And I'm going to give you some, a, a good way of teaching phases as well. Because I find that one of the things that happens is that you know phases. However, being able to convey that information and proper design and all that to another user is a another story altogether. So I'm going to draw some walls right next to each other. And hopefully they won't be so harsh. I just need a little bit of wall here. Um, copy paste. And let's talk about phasing now. Settings and phases. So what this is is a snapshot in time. Existing versus new construction. OK, let's go ahead and set that up. So these are existing. Let's look at the element properties of the wall. So when were they created? Oh, I want these created existing. So each object has its own phase that it was created in and the phase that it was demolished in. Okay, so already I have the two on the left are existing before the project even started. And these were created during the project, during, during construction. I have to create these walls. Let's move on to this next one and see what happens with back to settings and phases. We have existing and new construction. Right, existing on the left-hand side, new construction. Well, what happens if during new construction, this wall is demolished? And this is the right tool to use. Do not use the delete tool. We all know why that is, because if you delete the wall, it's gone from the project versus demolished. It doesn't get rid of the wall. What it does instead is change um, the way the wall looks, as well as well, actually, what it does is it's changed the phase that the wall was demolished in. And then according to what I have set up for my phases and my phase filters and my graphics override, as well as visibility graphic, sorry, visibility properties, what phase this view is in, sorry, what phase this view is in, that is all going to tie together. So I'm beginning to build a couple of pieces here that are very important for most companies. I'm going to bring these in a little bit closer just for just to give you a good idea on training stuff on this. Okay. Shading with edges also quite helpful. The layers of phasing are as follows. The object itself The time that the object was created 
are demolished. So now we have a time factor that is tied to the object. And then there's another piece here, which is visibility properties. What time is my camera looking at? Phase equals time. What time in the project am I looking at through my camera? So not only do objects, walls, doors, windows, have a phase attached to them, so do views. The views are saying, OK, I'm looking at the world through a camera that is set up in new construction time. The world looks totally different if you look at a camera that was placed in geologic, uh, I don't know, in the dinosaur age than it does today, right? The camera, physically same location, different time period, same thing here. Versus object, this object was created and is demolished in some specific phase, element properties. Phase created, phase demolished. Okay. Any questions about the properties of phasing, which are as follows. Each element has a phase, a, a time period in which it was created and demolished. Each camera has a time period that it is looking at those objects that were created and demolished. And then we have the way that these objects will look. And I would like to talk about the way that we object these objects would look. Do you have any questions about the first two pieces there? Nope. Nope. Good review for you. Been here, seen this probably before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's look at phase filters. Here is phase filters. I don't like the naming convention. I think the naming convention is really bad um, because this does not really give me any information about what those objects are going to look like. So, I'm not sure about the naming convention. Laura, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this naming convention? We usually um, don't mess with it. I think they just leave it the same. It's mostly oh. the team that talks about it. Okay. And so you're not you're you're not changing any of these. Not as far as I know. I mean, they might change it, but it's team specific. Okay. Um, it, the only thing that I would change at this level is to somehow talk about um, new equals uh, by category, existing equals by category, demolish equals by uh, not displayed. Some way, now whether this is a naming convention here or whether this is a, uh, a print screen of all of this information, somehow you need to document what the show complete actually means, what the show demo actually means, what the show new actually means in terms of graphic overrides. And so that's my comment on naming convention is, is, is that although this naming convention, most companies, I've, I've had most companies go, ah, I don't really need to change it. Cool. I, I Makes sense most of the time for people. Okay, I'm going to show the complete stuff. I'm going to show the demo stuff. I'm going to show the new stuff. I'm going to show the di the previous plus demo. This makes sense. What I'm saying on the right hand side is really the important information, though, because this is going to determine what my objects are going to look like. And so if I'm showing complete and I have this to not displayed, now my naming convention does not make sense. So that's the uh, that's the big deal there. All right. Um, existing demolish new temporary. Existing demolish. Sorry, new existing demolish temporary. Existing demolish new temporary. Do we see these pieces? Existing demolish new temporary. Phase filter new existing demolish temporary. And right click element properties for this wall. It was created before, so it was existing. It was not demolished, so therefore it is still an existing object in this view. Element properties. It was created in existing, and then it was demolished in this view, so therefore it is demolished in the current camera view. And let's go ahead and look back at that settings. And phases. 